Hi, I'm Harlan from Deporting Love. The past 24 to 48 hours has been extremely uh, interesting to say the least. We posted our story publicly in Nextdoor and in several neighborhood private groups that we belong to with the potential for upwards of 14,000 people to have seen our story. Of those, 2,000, almost 3,000 people clicked on our website the past uh, day. We received um, 100 to 150 um, signatures on our move on petition. And the support, the outpouring of support that we received has been just incredible. I want to say thank you to the people who have reached out and provided their support. It's through your support that we gain the courage to be able to continue our battle. And to those of you who have been extremely negative, sometimes inappropriate, exemplifying hate and calling names both to me and to others, I want to say to you thank you as well. Thank you because the only way to change is if we can hear each other. And I hear you. We see you in social media. You've made yourself very clear. But now it's time for change that involves compassion. I ask each of you to look at yourself and look at your life and imagine that when you wake up tomorrow morning, you roll over and look at the pillow of your partner and just think, could this be the day that they're taken away? Taken away by a government that's following a law that should be changed, a law that is archaic, a law that is inhumane. So would you then sit there and let them take them and say, ah, well, the law is law? Or would you say, hold on a second, when we were kids, we'd play on the playground and sometimes we would hurt other people or do something we really shouldn't do. And is it not true that when we step out, someone reminds us, hey, come on, you should do something different. You should do something about that. And by the way, you should apologize. Maybe it's time for change. That's the situation that we're in in the sandbox now. It's time for everybody to play fair. It's time for us to realize what's really going on. This is my story. I'm 50 years old, a former healthcare executive who for the, the entire, my entire life, my entire existence here on this planet, I have done nothing more than try to give more than I take, to love, to be open, and to be honest, and to do what I can for all people, including myself. I guess I'm just a believer in karma. So it's a little bit unfair that as you look at the screen behind me, in 78 days I'm being asked to leave this country. And the reason that I'm being asked to leave this country is even worse. I am married to the love of my life, the person that I love, the person I want to spend my life with, my partner, my mate. It's a dream come true because I grew up in this city of Indianapolis where um, the conservative slings and arrows of others told me that being gay was, well, it was... Uh, deplorable and should be something that should be hidden. In fact, I'll never forget that when in 1987, when I was uh, in my t early teenage years, HIV and AIDS was discovered and was all the rage in the press. And many of you would have said, it's God's answer for homosexuality. Let's put them to death in their own blood, you would say. Can't tell you how many times that I was beat up and treat mistreated. Most of my childhood and grade school years when I'd ride the school bus, I hid behind a giant pine tree over on the west side in Eagledale instead of standing on the bus stop with the rest of the other kids because I was usually picked on, slapped in the head, books knocked out of my hands. In one case, my tennis shoes were even stolen. Flash forward to today, the same thing has happened. Is it not that my tennis shoes are being stolen? My whole life is being stolen. And my life is being stolen because I love someone and not because we're gay, but because the law is the law, some of you have said. They should leave and come back the right way, some of you have said. A few of you, very interestingly, have said, you two are okay, but the rest got to go. In 2006, 2005, Enrique walked across the border in Texas. He wanted nothing more than what you and I have today. He wanted to be able to escape harm's way of the potential risks of, uh, risks of being recruited or extortioned into participating in a gang. And he also knew that he needed to get a job, make money, and make a life for himself. So at 19 years old, he came into the United States where he has since worked nonstop sending money home to take care of his family and friends. I ask you the question, how many of you take care of your family and friends like Latinos take care of their family and friends? I digress. He was processed by immigration. He was taken to a bus stop 
And essentially they said, go and be free. You will hear from us one day. The day never came. But they would argue that in 2006, they sent him a notice to appear. Although during the 2005 processing, they never bothered to get the address from him where he will be. How could he have received a notice to appear? In fact, in 2005, when they processed him, they spoke mostly in English and it was very hard to understand them. For the next decade, Enrique worked in the United States and did exactly what was asked of him, hoping that he would be able to stay with the family who lives here, all of them who had been here legally because of an earlier family member who came uh, decades previously legally and was able to sponsor them to come. Oh, you've probably heard of that as chain migration, something so horrible. The truth is, these people are the people who are building America. The truth is, these people are the people who, do, who are doing the jobs you don't want to do. I wonder how many of you are reading this post who don't even work. I'm just saying. They put him on a bus, let him join his family in Indiana. They say that in 2006, they sent a notice to appear. He didn't get it. In 2014, we have the dream opportunity to marry. We file for a green card, research is done, and we discover a deportation order. We receive consecutive stay of deportations thanks to the Obama administration and actually any other administration who has any conscience because that's what you do. You allow people to try to fix what's wrong. And because I'm a U.S. citizen, we got married, so it should be legal. At least that's what we thought. So we work towards making that deportation order go away. And the way you make a deportation go away, for those of you who don't know, is you file what's called an administrative open enclosure. The deportation goes away and you continue with your green card process. All would be good. After two consecutive years of filing for stay of deportation, the Trump administration now in office when our last stay of deportation expired in December. They denied that stay of deportation. And not only that, what is more, they also said, only recently, judges no longer have judicial discretion. We don't care what the story is. Illegal is illegal. I think they agree with many of you. Further, they said, doesn't matter if you're married to a U.S. citizen, go ahead and apply for the green card, but leave the country until you're legal, which they then later say, but that might be five to 10 years. Oh, well, you can come back. I'm 50 years old. I'm not coming back. In fact, if we leave this country, I'm taking our investments elsewhere. We will build a community where people deserve it and where people appreciate us. Many of you do not. And that, in my estimation, is going to be your loss. Last week, Sessions, uh, the Department of Justice and Attorney General Jeff Sessions, not only two weeks prior after having Zane, judges can no longer issue administrative open enclosures, and after they had already rejected our stay because judges can no longer issue stays. Now what they have said is, oh, and by the way, asylum seekers, sorry, don't really care what your plight is. Hey, you know what? For you women who have gone through violence at home, sorry. For those people who are afraid of gangs, yeah, well, you know, let's define gangs a little bit better. I think this is tantamount to um, just inhumane, deplorable behavior by this administration. I think it's also outcasting because these people are uh, of color. I think this administration, if you look deep enough, you will see it's the whitewashing of America like never before seen. To me, this is ethnic cleansing. Just look it up, seriously. Look it up. Ethnic cleansing is when you not necessarily only kill people from other, that would be genocide. Ethnic cleansing is when a people of a certain group or a certain uh, community are outcast in another community and you push them out. Seems what, what we're doing here today. For those of you who have posted wonderful and supportive things, thank you so much. It takes a ton of courage. We have now stepped out. We are on the radar as thousands of eyeballs have looked at our story and understand the injustice that's occurring. We need you. We need you to tell your family and friends and we need you to continue to support the journey that we're on. There are parallel tracks underway. One, we are seeing attorneys that we are hopeful will join us in our battle to bring federal suit against the United States government. We must stand up for those who do not have a voice, and you better believe we are going to. Two, we might leave. We are currently investigating uh, opportunities to move to a Central American community, so it's very possible that we may actually leave. In the United States of America, if you're an undocumented, the government tells you, 
filed for what's called an ITIN. Enrique filed for an ITIN. He paid for taxes, which allows you to pay for taxes. It's a tax ID number for uh, more than a decade. This, they say, in the IRS tax code is a demonstration of good moral character. Good moral character, they say, you're sort of acclimating to our lifestyle, will help uh, be, it will be considered for future legalization efforts. That's what they promise. Today they're saying, get out, we don't care. Sorry about the ITN, sorry about your fact that you paid taxes, and Lord knows what they're gonna do with the nearly $1 trillion surplus in taxes paid by the undocumented. That I might add, data shows is holding up the cash flow of the Social Security Administration. Your payments, some of you, today, are coming from the backs of the undocumented that you are trying to get rid of. And by the way, with the tax cut that's really only benefiting the rich and certainly not benefiting the common middle class, and with the current trade war that's coming on, you're going to see increase in prices, decrease in tax revenues, and when you deport all these people and all that money falls out of the tax revenues that's currently holding it up, ungood. <laughs> No good. Nothing good can come of that. Thank you so much for your support. And for those of you who are in, involved in the dialogue, keep it up. We appreciate you. Enrique and I are really uh, facing some of the gravest challenges as we disassemble our life, close down our business, um, prepare for a move to a Central American country that I've never been to, and it's been a, a decade or more for him. Um... Our American dream has collapsed under the slings and arrows of people who are unwilling to understand, under the unconscionable and incompassionate leadership of totalitarian regime, regime that seeks only to oppress its people into um, dependence on its leadership. If we're in Central America, flash forward into the future, if this continues, you will find yourself needing, clinging to, the very leadership that you support today. I'm sorry that this is happening to all of us. Let's have the heart and mind to listen and to truly seek change in the appropriate ways they should be. Let's stop throwing names around and treating each other so negatively. Let's stop harming each other and start loving each other and bring back neighborhood values um, where we can truly care for each other. I can't imagine a more extraordinary win-win than a bunch of people who care for each other. But I can tell you what's most destructive, a bunch of people filled with hate. I don't want to see that future. I think we're already there.